Dr. Stroud, malnutrition, not a problem for the developed world, I would have thought. Well, unfortunately it is. Uh, there's an awful lot of it about, uh, with enormous numbers of people affected because of social isolation, uh, poverty, and the fact that when people are ill, even if they come from a good starting point, they get malnourished pretty quickly. It's part of illness. So how many people in Britain would be malnourished? Well, we're talking about millions of people in millions. total. Yes. And Certainly, if you look at a hospital experience, then 30 to 40 percent of people going into hospital are malnourished when they arrive at the door. What impact does malnutrition have? Why is it so important to address it? Well, it makes you very vulnerable. Uh, it is both a cause and a consequence of disease. If you're malnourished, you become ill more uh, easily. Uh, if you're ill, you become malnourished and you can get a vicious cycle and you're trying to break it. So what is BAPEN calling for? What needs to change? Well, it needs to be appreciated that it is a big problem. It needs to be actually looked for and spotted. We talk about screening for malnutrition. Uh, once you have found the people who are at risk, you have to have a specific pathway uh, outlined for their care. The professional staff, all clinical staff and managers need to know about it. And you need some structures to make it all work so that it's a uh, uh, an important part of all aspects of care in all settings. It would seem extraordinary that they don't know about it already, that they don't give it at least some priority. Well, it has gone up the uh, agenda to some extent, but it's been completely overshadowed by obesity, for example, and yet actually it costs the NHS more than obesity does, and it is simpler to do something about it. So in the current recessionary climate, it could be something that would save the NHS a lot of money as well as addressing the particular need. Yes, it's thought to cost £13 billion a year in excess costs. Uh, if you can save 10% of that, £1.3 that's a significant health saving. And are you getting sir, a good response from the government? Well, the government are aware of the problem and uh, some of the ministers that have recently taken up posts are uh, certainly aware of it. The chief nursing officer has said, you know, this is one of the key uh, high impact factors to deal with it. NICE have recently pronounced that this is one of the key areas for making savings. So uh, yes, it's beginning to get there, but uh, they need to know more about it and do more about it. And what are the main ways in which BAPEN is addressing its aim to tackle this problem? Well, uh, we're trying to get it at the politicians, all the hospital managers and the clinical professionals and the patients so that everyone appreciates the significance and everyone is thinking about this so that it happens. It's not rocket science. It can uh, happen relatively easily if people are aware of it. How are you making people aware of it? Well, our organisation is growing. We produce documents to show that uh, there's a lot of it around. We do an annual nutrition screening week, which actually gets to the prevalence and says, look, there's 30% of hospital patients have got the problem. Uh, we make recommendations to government, the Department of Health, saying this is the way to tackle it and this is the way you should approach the commissioning of services so that uh, all services have it as an integral embedded part. And we're trying to make a noise everywhere we can so that people recognise this major, major problem that is worth spotting. Are you surprised that in Britain, in this day and age, there is a need for a charity like yours? Well, I'm frankly astonished. Uh, I think it's a disgrace that nutrition isn't recognised as a more important part of patient care. Florence Nightingale spotted it and it really should have continued from there.